Welcome to this Learn Electrics video. There is sometimes confusion over what exactly should be bonded in a mixed plastic and copper water service installation. The question is, if the incoming water supply is by plastic pipe, should we bond any metallic or copper pipes from the water service? Up to and including 17th edition, it was standard practice to bond any metallic water pipes in the property. This has changed with the 18th edition and we only bond if they are likely to introduce a potential during a fault. What do we mean by introduce a potential? Ask yourself this, would you bond a metal shaving mirror in the bathroom? Or a metal unheated towel rail? Of course you wouldn't. The reason, you will tell me, is that they don't make contact with the electrical supply or with any earth parts. There is no path back to earth. Keep that in mind as we go through this video. Let's look at main bonding and in this video the water service. If the incoming water service pipe is plastic and the service pipes around the property are all plastic then there is no need to bond. But what about the water? Surely this has an effect. Well yes it does but the effect is so insignificant that we can ignore this fact. We can show this by using Ohm's law. Shown here is the familiar Ohm's law triangle and we can use this to calculate the current that might flow through just the water during a fault. Let's have an incoming supply all in plastic. The stop tap and the water tap are both in metal so we can measure between these two points. The question is what is the resistance of the water in this 3 metre section of 15 millimetre plastic pipe. If we apply 250 volts to the two metal taps we will get a resistance reading of around 500,000 ohms. Ohm's law tells us that 250 volts divided by 500,000 ohms will give us a current of 0 0.0005 amps. That is a current through the water of just 0.5 milliamps. The limit of survivability is about 50 milliamps and RCDs for protection of life are set at 30 milliamps. So our water current at 0.5 milliamps is just 1 60th of the RCD tripping current. And that is why we are told to disregard the water. Some examples of different scenarios. Here we have an old plastic pipe. It starts out as plastic and travels all through the property as plastic. In this case it is fairly obvious that there is no requirement to main bond this pipe. And would we bond the metal tap at the end? Of course not. Now we have the same entry point to the property in plastic. But then the pipework changes to copper. Because the whole route of the length of copper pipe can be visually checked and confirmed as not going to anywhere earthy, there is no need to bond that piece of pipework. Think about it. We agreed on the last slide that we didn't need to bond the metal tap. What is so different about this scenario? It is just a longer tap. In this situation, the pipework again starts out as plastic and then changes to copper. But the copper pipe then disappears into the ground out of view. It has gone earthy. Part of the root is in the soil and it must therefore be bonded in both sections. I'll tell you why in a moment. Now the copper pipe disappears into the wall. We don't know where it goes. It might be just a short link through the wall before it reappears. But we cannot be certain. Therefore we must assume that it might go to earth somewhere and we must bond both sections of it. Why both sections? Well what if the pipe develops a small leak in another part of the building and the plumber repairs it by cutting out the leaky section and replaces it with a short length of plastic push fit. But this plastic repair effectively separates the copper pipe into two halves and could inhibit electrical continuity. And that is why we need both visible parts to be bonded. Here is the same pipe as the last slide. Again we don't know where it goes to. In this case it does go to earth 
but we cannot see this. We must bond both sections of this pipe work for the same reasons as above. And hopefully this short video has helped a little with your understanding. Before we go, and not part of main bonding, let's look quickly at radiators, particularly bathroom radiators and supplementary bonding. Section 415 of the wiring regulations tells us that additional protection can be by either an RCD or by supplementary protective equipotential bonding. It is generally accepted that if a 30 milliamp RCD is installed, then that part of the installation does not require protection by supplementary bonding. If the heating water to the radiator is supplied by all metallic pipework, then the radiator must be supplementary bonded if there is no 30 milliamp RCD protection for the bathroom circuits. However, if the radiator is supplied by all plastic pipework, bonding is not required. It is, in effect, just the same as the bathroom mirror. What if the radiator is supplied by plastic pipework to just below the floorboards and the last 150 millimetres is by copper tips for aesthetic reasons? Again, it has no possible earth connection and therefore does not need to be bonded. I hope that this clears up some of the confusion. Always try and trace the flow of any potential fault current and ask yourself if it is possible for it to become earthy or is it just like the bathroom mirror? Thank you for watching this video, it is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on the notify button to be sure of not missing our next video. And here are some tips on getting even more information and help out of learnelectrics.com. At your web browser, enter learnelectrics.com into the search bar Select learnelectrics.com from the choices offered and the website, as shown, will open up for you. You now have a couple of choices. You can search for a help item or any video by entering a keyword into the search bar on the right. Click on Return and all the help files and videos with that word in the title will be listed for you. They will be shown with a short description. Click on Continue Reading for more information and each video listed will have a link shown that will take you directly to that exact YouTube video. Or you can browse through a list of all the available items and videos. To do this, click on the LE logo on the left of the home page and all of our items and videos will be shown. There will be 10 items shown on each page and at the bottom of each page is a page selector, page 2, 3, 4, etc. that will bring up the next 10 items or videos in the list. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. Once again, thanks for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.